KD working group meeting for May 24th of the year 2022. And uh, don't forget to put your name in the attendees section, just so we know that you're here. Um, attendees section of the meeting, that's the way we know you're here. We know if there's something you might have missed if you weren't here, um, and we can reach out to you, in case may be. Uh, let's take a quick look at the agenda. Is, is there anything that folks would like to add or change? Uh, feel free to do so if you want to just plop stuff in there. Spend about 30 seconds if folks want to go ahead. Not have Christian or Vadim, so I think we will be winging it in terms of actual OKD engineering updates. Correct. Yeah. I thought we were always winging it with OKD engineering. <laughs> I, I think that's the way open source works is winging it at these at this rate. But yeah, we're getting there. looking at the agenda now. All right, let's jump into uh, our agenda. And, and uh, release updates, like I said, we don't have Christian or Vadim here. What I did want to do is bring up the operator count question. Um, I asked Christian about this and he looked and recently the operator count hasn't changed. It's at like 150 something. Um, but I remember it was much smaller, and Bruce, I think you mentioned that you remember it being much smaller in previous releases. Does, any, does well, anyone else notice this or, or is aware of this? I, I haven't checked in on that in a while, so. Yeah, Christian brought this up at KubeCon because I think something went off on his phone or whatever, and he noticed and looked, and there was like a much bigger list. I know there, like Cecile Machado, who's a Red Hat employee who's been doing a lot with the OLM. I know she, she has, she had some explanation that seemed to satiate Christian's curiosity, but I just don't know enough details about it to remember okay. what it was. Okay. I would say that's maybe right. reach out to Christian or next time we're all here, I have Camila a comment on it. That's, that's Cam Camila Machado, right? Yeah, Camila, sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, no, we can, I can ping her and, and ask. Um, for what was going on. So that was... Yeah, so for context, at the docs meeting last week, Bruce, why don't you go ahead? You brought it up. You noticed it first and brought it to our attention. Why don't you go ahead and explain what you noticed? Yeah, well, no, I, I was, uh, I guess I was doing something on my test cluster, and uh, which is on 4.10 current version. And uh, uh, I, I noticed that uh, there were a lot of uh, operators, in particular the GitLab operator was one that I noticed because I had been having difficulties with that uh, uh, from long past. And uh, then I looked around and there were several that were that had been deleted going from I think 4.7 to 4.8. And then I went back on my 4.9 cluster, uh, which uh, I had actually made a note to myself going operator by operator of the ones that disappeared, and uh, most of them were back. And so it wasn't associated with an upgrade because uh, my 4.9 cluster hasn't been updated for a long time since, you know, especially the Ceph thing came out. Uh, so something happened with, with I don't know what, you know, like maybe things made it into the operator hub that was being pulled down uh, that had disappeared. And I know that uh, with respect to the uh, GitLab runner one specifically, um, when it disappeared and I asked some questions, Vadim had said, oh, well, it, was, it was, wasn't currently compatible. So that seemed like a logical reason for its disappearal. But anyway, so that's just history. It doesn't shed a whole lot of light. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I just, uh, well, I mean, the, the ones that I really care about 
so like all the ones that would allow you to do uh, GitOps are not there. Yeah. Okay. But, and, but, uh, is, oh, yeah, but, but, but still, it's a big, I mean, it is a big plus. Yes. Uh, it, I, anecdotally, all I know is I did a, I think it was a 4.8 install a while back, like last fall, and I remember that there were only like 40 something, or maybe it was like in the early 50 operators. Uh, and now looking at a uh, a 4.8 that was upgraded to 4.9 recently, but I didn't notice it in the upgrade now has 152 or whatever that, that higher number is. Um, and it's like AWS operators and all sorts of stuff that was not there before. So it's, it's pretty snazzy, it's pretty cool. Um, we might wanna give that a little bit of promotion if we're sure that that's something that's gonna stay around. We should reach out to Christian um, uh, or the other Red Hat person if they know specifically um, and find out if this is gonna if it's going to stay like this for a while, and then maybe sort of promote that. Sorry, you're muted, Diane. I am. I'm always muted. I've got a cold again from traveling, not COVID, um, which is just a cold this time. Uh, I will reach out and start a conversation with Camila and Christian and get to the bottom of it and find out if it's if it's a permanent upgrade or if it's uh, gonna disappear at, at any time soon and, and let you know and, and, and have one of them send a post to the mailing list. Um, That'd be fantastic. Or it, is, is there a discussion started about it already? Uh, there is not, but we can create one. Uh, let's, uh, Bruce, can you go ahead and pop on and create one sometime in the next, like, you know, sometime sure. soon? Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and if you tag me in it, then, then I, you know, then we can see, because if it is, per hopefully it is, there's also a lot of work going on in the background around because as as we all know Vadim has gotten busy with with a new promotion doing other things so there's a, a trio of customer facing engineers who are taking on um, learning and building out the ci cd process and i have a meeting which jamie i may try and get you in i'll, I'll have the first one with them fabiano franz um, who's a, an awesome awesome person um is is leading is managing that initiative with the customer facing engineers and he's i think he's down in brazil somewhere but um you'll like him we'll all like him i'm going to try and get him to start coming to the working group meeting and they're going to um work on the ci cd pipeline for okd um, and take the learnings that vadim had this is one of the many conversations that are going on about how do we resource um the build process here inside of red hat and Hopefully we can get them to show up at the working group meeting and tell us what they're thinking and get their feedback on it. I'm hoping for the next, not this, not the docs week, but in two weeks time to have some of them yeah. on. Yeah, and get them to start coming. Fantastic, thanks Diane. But the, the good news, that, that is the good news. It, and that maybe the, the lift in the operators has something to do with that, I, but I doubt it because it's kind of early days for them. Yeah, yeah. I, I vaguely remember, like, I was talking with Christian, and he looked down at his phone, and because someone said, "Oh, there's like 160 operators in the catalog now." He thought something must have happened that, like, accidentally brought them in. So he started reaching out, and I thought he watched, he re, he spoke with Camilla, and it was like, whatever the result of that conversation was, it was like, "Oh, it's supposed to be like this." So yeah, I, I'm not sure what the detail was though. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, we'll find out. So, but I I'm not, I know I'm not the only person who noticed that after an OKD install of like four or eight or whatever, there was like a woeful, woefully small number of of operators, like 40 some odd or 50 some odd. So yeah, something something happened somewhere. Um, all right, so Bruce is gonna create a discussion item and tag Diane and, and if you could tag me as well. Um, and so that's, is there anything else OKD release oriented that folks wanted to talk about before we move on, even though we don't have um, any of our Red Hat engineers here? I think folks want to discuss. Okay, uh, moving on now to um, FCOS updates. Timothy. All right, you can hear me correctly. So, uh, I've put it links in the agenda. 
the main that happened that are happening right now in Federal Cruise Land and uh, that should impact OKG. Um, oh, the first one is about the, the fact that we are making the adding support in ignition to remove ignition configs um, VMware and VirtualBox platform by default. So if you had we posted an announce, announcements for that on, on this, but essentially the idea is if you if you have an ignition config on those platforms, um, every unprivileged user in one containers can access them. So if you store secrets in those, it's not great uh, because they can read them. So this does not directly impact OCP because uh, as far as I know, I think most of the use case in OCP is you don't have directly secrets into the initial engine config. They are fetched from uh, the, the MCO, MCS. So, uh, and pods don't have containers on OKD, don't have access to, to this server. They are blocked at the firewall level. Um, so yeah, but still, it's not that great. So we're removing that from those platforms, and um, but we're not removing that from all the platforms yet, so, because we don't have a solution for everybody uh, yet. So it's uh, just a start. So maybe there would be some further change down the road for for this one, but uh, we'll see how it goes. The second one uh, is about the new Tenix artifacts. So that only ever impacts you if you're using the new Nutanix platform, uh, which was fairly recently added, I think a couple of weeks or months ago. Uh, and essentially we changed the way we ship the other federal chorus images for Nutanix. Instead of shipping something compressed after the fact, we ship the image directly compressed. It's just a change of format. Uh, it should not impact, impact anything else. Uh, and uh, yeah, essentially, it should make your life easier if you're using the new Tanix platform. So hopefully that helps. The last one I want to bring up is this last issue here is, is an issue about the way we grow our file system by default on the node. So when you have a federal chorus image, essentially it starts really small and then it takes up all the space on the node that it has. But essentially doing that uh, with XFS, but well, Will, with almost any file system, works well only if you use a rather small image. So let's say if you start from 10 gigs and you go to 100 gigs, that's okay. But if you go to one terabyte, for example, that's not getting messy because the file system is not supposed to be grown this much from such a small image. So the idea is we want to. I want to focus here. Is uh, not something that we don't have a fix right now for this, but Essentially, the, the the right way to do things is if you have such large disks on your node, is to use multiple partitions, and that's what we recommend. And I have added the link uh, to the exact part of the OCP documentation or OKD documentation that helps you set up the machine config to have a separate partitions to actually store your data, which completely works around this specific issue. And that's the recommended way to do things. So. It's the prefer option. And that's it for me for FCOS updates. Excellent. Any questions or, or feedback uh, for Timothy in terms of Fedora Core OS stuff? Uh, yeah, Timothy, uh, do we know when uh, kernel 5.17.9 will make it in? Good question, I don't know. Is it in Fedora? Uh, yes. At least there are, there are uh, Fedora 35 and 36 builds of it, of the package. So 5.7.9, it should be in testing soon. Uh, well, it, it will be in FCOS, but would it be in OKD? That's another question. Uh, uh, that, so that, totally that's probably... Uh, so Fedora 35, yes, it's in Fedora 35. So 5.17.9, right? Right. 
Yes, it's in Fedora 35, so it should go into the next OKD and by Demo Christian Mix. Which will be a Fedora 36 o uh, F class, right? Uh, that depends if we. But I don't remember exactly which version the next version, next build of OKD will be based on. Is the switch well, plan for this one or for the next one? I don't well, know. next and testing are both on uh, 36. Uh, stable is on 35. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that's the confusing part here is that there's Federal Cores. So we essentially moving Federal Cores. Oh, do you mean for the for the first image or for the cluster, entire cluster? Well, no, no. O o okay, OKD, I know, is a whole separate discussion. I'm talking about FCOS. Okay, then FCOS itself. Uh, I have to look at what's in testing right now. Uh, we sh I think we're shipping, we're making a testing release today, so there should be, it should get into testing. It's in, uh, is it in the latest thing testing devil? So it's either in this one or next one. It's in this week's testing release. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this, this week testing. Excellent. And this is going to be more helpful um, as time goes on because as we try to do OKD builds of our own uh, and testing and testing with our own versions of FCOS ideally. Um, I think that this type of information will become uh, very important uh, and for OKD working group members to be more aware of what's happening in the three FCOS streams, for sure. All right, anything else in terms of uh, FCOS stuff? All right, let's move on to documentation. Uh, documentation stuff, um, uh, Brian is not here today, but uh, I can fill you in on some of the stuff that we have. So uh, when we met last week, uh, Brian mentioned that he has now merged in OKD development. Um, it was sort of in a separate um, uh, 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 clone of the repo that he was working on with a couple other folks. It's now been merged into the website. So if you look the second to last link on the website is OKD development and it talks about um, basically modifying OKD, release, troubleshooting, things of that nature. Um, not, a, not all of it's filled in yet, um, but basically this is going to be where we start talking about um, building OKD um, ourselves or modifying OKD, getting those images, etc. There's a great conversation that um, uh, Bruce and who else? It's, so it's, it's you, Bruce, and Vadim, and John, and there's a couple John, of people on that thread. Yeah, John started it, uh, right. a lot yeah, so, with the other brilliant things John has done recently. Right, exactly. So, so, so John Fortin um, started a discussion thread that folks should check out in the repo um, that is about if I wanted to, if any of us wanted to build OKD, where do we find the right images, which, which registry are we going to, um, and is it the same for all of the components, et cetera, et cetera? And where do we find the source for those components so that we can actually provide feedback directly to those components? Um, and so it's, it's a great thread. I'll put a link in the meeting notes to it. Check it out because Vadim's really been doing, um, he's chiming in when he can and it's been very helpful. And Christian has chimed in uh, as well with that. But that will be our, um, that will help form the foundation of the documentation section informing stuff uh, about actually building uh, OKD uh, in the community. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, let's see, the uh, working group um, link uh, in the OKD website has changed. It's now OKD working group at the top level. Uh, and then there's about charter minutes and then subgroup and the subgroups link goes to the individual um, subgroups that we have going. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I'm working on something that explains the release process and how we're not going to be releasing 4.9, any iterations of 4.9, because 
OKD has been up to this point a, once we release a next minor version, all efforts go towards that next minor version, uh, and there's no maintenance releases for that. So I'm writing up, trying to find a good way to, to explain that. Um, Steph Testers, uh, CRC, we're talking about that. Um, Twitter, uh, as mentioned, we need to change the email address. Diane came up with a solution. Um, Diane, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yep. Um, apologies for all the delays, um, but I did find um, the, the problem with Twitter is you need to have a Red Hatter email address that is going to be uh, not change jobs, um, and it needs to be a human being. It can't be um, like a, a a shared email address within Red Hat. Um, and I did find um, Kareem um, Collis, who is it in the OpenShift BU in marketing, who will own it um, for us. She's also the person responsible for all social media for OpenShift, OpenShift Commons, and owns the other ones too. So um, she has said, yes, we just now have to figure out how to swap the emails um, out and get Twitter to, to release it to her. And then she'll share whatever password, username, password with myself and Jamie. Um, and if someone else comes up and wants to be the social media manager, that person too. But she also will be able to do some tweets for us when we need them, like when we do events or things. So that, um, and she's promised me that she's going to stay forever. She loves her job and she's promised. So um, the problem with engineers is they get good at their jobs and they get promoted. So um, I'm a proponent of that, but um, we need people. Address stays stable for. And you should now have the YouTube back. Um, they were doing some spring cleaning on all of the YouTube OpenShift channel um, admins, and you got swept out um, in the cleanse. <laughs> in the cleanse. So um, I did yeah, actually um, accept the. I did get added and accepted, so I'm I'm back. Yeah. Good. All right, you're back. I because I just don't want to be doing that again. Um, so yeah, that's that's the social media update. Um, excellent. Thank you, Diane. Survey stuff. Um, uh, link is to the survey. We do need folks to provide some feedback on the survey uh, and help us uh, make it good. We do have a deadline of we want to get it out um, June 1st-ish, and we also we want to start the transition and have that the repo transition start and be completed by July 1st. So we're actually starting in the docs group to create some deadlines uh, to get things done. Um, Sorry, when is the, the deadline for, for answering the survey? Uh, well, it's not answering the survey. It's providing feedback on the survey itself to make sure that it captures what it is that we want to ask people. So ah, if, you, okay. if you look at the survey, there's a link in the, in the meeting notes. If you look at it, if you think there's some questions that maybe we're missing, or if, it, or if a question isn't clear or something like that, let us know because we want to have a and – then, and then we're going to release the survey on June 1st to people in the community. Um, to oh, the community. okay, I see. I, yeah. th I so thought this is actually... meta feedback on the survey, yeah. Uh, I thought this is actually an old survey because it says which version of OKD are you using and the, and the most recent one is 4.8. Yes, yes, it, it does. It was, uh, it was a long time. This has been a long project. I think the survey first got started, the survey project got started in November of last year, I think it was. Oh, okay, November. I see. Yeah. So, Maybe we can just add like the the most uh, two recent versions there. Exactly. Thank you for that feedback. I, I hadn't noticed that. Um, yeah. So folks, please give feedback. Uh, send it to the mailing list or in the Slack channel or in the Matrix channel or wherever it is that that uh, you want to communicate. Um, what was the other thing that we're getting here? Oh, so. There was some discussion about um, Diane. Maybe this answers somewhat answers the question, but it, it, what you said earlier maybe answers this question. But is it possible for the OKD working group to convince the DNS administrator administrators at Red Hat to to put different MX records? So MX records are what point to a mail server and say, oh, the mail server for this domain is such and such. 
could you find out if they would be amenable to pointing it to a mail server that the group has control of so we can start creating email addresses that are at okd.io? Because my sense is that Red Hat doesn't want to actually host email accounts for us or manage aliases. Maybe I'm wrong? If you, if you could also, I'm going to just keep pushing to this. If you can write that up in the discussion. I will write it up. As a, yeah. And tag me, and then I will see what I can do if I can work any magic. Um, I have seen it done for other projects, so it might be possible. Okay. Um, that would be fantastic. And it might be a good way of managing some of our issues, transition issues. So, yeah. Cool. We'll see. Cool. All right. And um, if anything else that came up out of the docs meeting, Bruce, you were there. Am I missing anything that's not covered in the meeting notes important from the docs meeting? I'm just thinking, I think that's most of it. Uh, let me just go have a yeah. look. Oh, one other, there was one other thing. Um, okay. Zoom, how do folks feel about Zoom versus BlueJeans? The, the reason for this is the way things are right now, I don't have access to, no one outside of Diane has access to the recordings until she forwards them on. So we can't actually post them. Um, there's some technical limitations with Zoom. Everyone that I've talked to seems to be, have more meetings. Uh, tech, there's technical limitations to blue jeans. There's more opportunity with Zoom. And it seems like people I've talked to, more of them are using Zoom for more of their meetings than blue jeans. So I said I'd bring this to the greater group. Have that the topic. What do, what do folks think? I, for one, would love to get out of blue jeans. Um, and over to Zoom, it's just a matter of creating an, you know, getting an account that is available to us to use. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm game. I'm game if you all are. All right, I'm going to speak now because <laughs> this one is something I care a lot about, having fought all the platforms all the time. Um, I am in favor in um, order of usability ease preference, whatever you want to go with. Um, uh, Zoom, Jitsi, Google Meet. Um, you can, whatever order you want to, you want to think of that in. That's, that's basically the three that so far I have had a reasonable experience dealing with them on Linux and on Windows and on Mac OS and and at work, I have I have Zoom conference system. So if we use Zoom, I can use those instead of having to use my laptop all the time. So if I'm not doing it from work, then I don't. Then Zoom falls a little down because it's a little annoying at times. But otherwise, yeah, any one of those three are good. All right, I see some some chatter. Folks want to talk uh, in uh, over the air about what what your thoughts are. Uh, I was just saying I don't I don't have any uh, I think changing platforms is fine no no objection for me I think it would be cool to use an open source platform like Jitsi if we could but you know I don't I don't have really strong feelings about the the platform we choose. Yeah. Anyone else? I just, I just want something I can use on any of my devices. So um and it's not Blue Jeans, so. Yeah, recording is key. So Neil, I, I think it was Neil that, uh, yeah, Neil points out that um, recording in Jitsi uh, is a pain. Um, that's kind of one of the things we want to get around is we want to have recording and posting as easy as possible so that our recordings are available quickly to the community. Um, Google, do you have to pay for recording now with Google? I thought you had to pay now for to get a paid version to record, but I could be wrong. I don't you know. You need to pay for recordings. You do? Okay. Like you can, everyone can do meetings, but only people who have paid accounts can do recordings. Right, right. That's also true with Zoom for what it's worth. You don't, you can't do right. um, cloud recordings without a paid account. That being said, right. I am very aware that our lovely sponsor has both. 
So those are both equally valid options for us. So is there any objection to us um, attempting to create um, these meetings in Zoom? If I do the do some background work um, and see if I can get an account that Jamie, that Jamie again, like, the, yeah, cool. Let, let me see. It may not happen right away because nothing happens fast. Um, but let me see if there is um, a Red Hat Zoom account that we can hijack um, and use and that Jamie can also, as an external, have access to. That's always been the issue. And, um, and, I, and I really want to have it something that an external person with a non-Red Hat email account can boot up the, the meeting so it's not, um, you can, not me. It's not me yeah. all the time. Well, and with Zoom, you can do uh, the, um, you can add hosts. someone as a secondary, right? And, yeah. and they yeah. can start the meeting. So. The terminology is alternative hosts. And my, yeah. don't quite quote me on this, but I think Red Hat Marketing has a premium Zoom account because they use it for all of the uh, Red Hat live streams. All of that is done with Zoom. Yeah. Unfortunately, all of our internal meetings are on, still on Blue Jeans, so I'll still be here in Blue Jeans forever. Oh gosh. <laughs> and, and I would be so if that doesn't work out, I would be willing to donate my business Zoom for use of these meetings. We would, or maybe set up a second one, but we'd want to have a plan for handing it off. Should yeah. I ever get abducted by aliens or something? Yeah. Yeah, I might be able to finagle being able to use Datto's Zoom. I'd have to ask people in whatever if if need be. But uh, uh, again, we, we should have we should have plans when it comes yeah. to using Zoom yeah. because of the way that Zoom works. Yeah. yeah, let's 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 put it on the agenda for the docs meeting next week. Give me until next Tuesday to do a little bit of research and um, let's get that we've got the YouTube, the Twitter figured out, and um, let's get the Zoom thing going because. Much as I love blue jeans, not. It would be wonderful. Yeah, we'll create a discussion yeah. item and, and fill in the details there with what we find. Next week. And then uh, we just have to get Christian to change the um, Fedora calendar invite. I have access to the Fedora calendar. I can change it. So. Yeah. Well, Fedora, we love you. What right. would be nice is, is if uh, any of the Red Hat SSOs could get you onto the, the Zoom meeting. Yeah, that would be a miracle. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a longer okay. conversation. Yes. So, so right. uh, let's, let's let's keep moving on because I added a few things to the agenda too, just because I, I figured right. I'd sneak them in. All right, sounds good. So um, let's now uh, move on to uh, plan for docs update issues, uh, repository transition survey, Rook Ceph status. I don't think there's anything that's changed with, with John's Bugzilla. Um, discussion one, two, three, one. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know that. Do you have a link there somewhere? Uh, well, that's, I'm actually going to have to look at the repo because I. Yeah, that's, that's John's build it from scratch. Oh, that's uh, the one there. Discussion. Okay, so yeah, that's that's fine then. Yeah. Uh, um, so I just I just sort of wanted to bring up one thing related to that, uh, which didn't appear in the discussion because it was a little bit longer. Uh, like Vadi made the comment that uh, you you could just try uh, replacing some of the base images uh, with an open source one. Um, but it, it sort of seemed like we did have an action item a long time ago with uh, Christian to go through and uh, look at that. Uh, to me, the issue is not just uh, can you replace a base image and it sort of seems to work because you haven't quite stumbled into the area where it doesn't. Uh, it'd be more useful to know what, spe what specific Red Hat proprietary packages were in the proprietary base image. Right. Uh, and if there are none, then you could presumably safely change it. Timothy is being passionate. Uh, what, what can you share? There's very much time? none. <laughs> we don't ship proprietary packages anywhere at this in OCP, so there's no thing proprietary. It's just. I think the, the more accurate term is encumbered because some of the content 
is subscription encumbered. And that actually might be the, the problem. Um, I don't think any of the OCP containers use any of that stuff anymore. I think they've all moved to rel UBI quite some time ago and just tried to stop using base rel content. But one of the things I'm not entirely certain of is if the the build engine thing has ensured that rel content is disabled during the build process to make sure that that stuff doesn't leak in. Um, I, if that hasn't happened, then it's entirely possible through nobody's fault that there's subscription encumbered content inside the images. Um, something that um, I've done at uh, my workplace was our rel UBI base image basically inherits from the main one. And the first thing it does, and really the only thing it does is turn off subscription managers plugin so that it cannot actually access the encumbered stuff. Uh, because if subscription manager detects an entitlement on the um, in in the environment, it will overwrite the repos and replace it automatically with real rel repos. So that's one way to kind of guarantee that that doesn't happen. I okay. I tend to agree with Timothy on this. I don't I don't think we have any encumbered content going into those, but we do have two sets of build images, and one of them is behind a gated, you know, right. authentication. Right. right. Well, well, I guess so I guess if the if all of the uh, the stuff that we can access to build things, uh, the the initial you know from image is a gated resource uh, that yeah you know, we can't access we, without logging. Yeah, we have multiples. Logging. So like not all of our not all of our component teams have done this yet, but like we have a publicly available build image, and you can basically swap the from line in the Docker files that make up our components now. Some teams have done it, some teams have not created multiple Docker files. So I have a feeling we probably just need to audit it and go through and figure out which ones are still using the gated build file and then just propose like, what well, what our team maintains is like a Docker file dot rel and then like a regular Docker file the community would use. Like my personal preference is to see more teams do this internally where we have a Docker file that's a community Docker file and a Docker file that's like, you know, our build Docker file. Um, as far as I've seen, every component I've come across, you can just swap the from line to the open builder, and they work the same, basically. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, I think as we get more into the engineering bits of trying to build our own OKD out in the community, we'll run across that stuff. Um, uh, right. And as Timothy points out, you can use option uh, from with podman. Um Let's now move on to uh, CRC, or I'm sorry, it's no longer CRC. It's now OpenShift Local. Bruce, you noticed this, I think, initially before I did. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I noticed it, uh, I guess, last week when I was looking at uh, some video that I got from I don't even know where. Um, I don't know. I guess it would be nice if the marketing people sort of told us these things in advance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some of the marketing choices. <laughs> uh, You're talking to the yeah yeah. We're don't make like, any sense to me. Like maybe we should just grab a uh, mini shift. Right. Yeah. You know, no, that seems to be available. I, yeah. I I don't know. I mean then and then there's. Marketing, I didn't get a heads up on it, so apologies. Like, I would have given you a heads up. Maybe I did get a heads up and it went in one ear and out the other ear, so I apologize because it just didn't. Right. Yeah. Well, it and, turns out and... this is like an April 8th uh, <coughs> video, um, but I think you had to go through the, you know, like the developer login to get to it, so it may not have been public at that time, like a month ago. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah. Uh, it's now made it into uh, uh, a, a number of public places. Uh, yeah, I saw the, the info week or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. Branding at Red Hat has never been our forte. So. Um, right. Yeah. The the info world uh, one was was recent, and uh, the 
uh, there, there is a article under Red Hat Developer, What's New in OpenShift Local.2. And so it talks about the new branding. And uh, interestingly, on the same page with related content, they have a, leak, uh, a link to uh, introducing Red Hat code-ready containers. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm just going to say that's lovely. Yes, yeah. so, we are a company of engineers. We are not a great company of marketing people. So. Yeah. Okay, so here's the question for the group. There is discussion happening. There's that discussion thread. I'll link it in the meeting docs. There is a discussion thread with Charo and a few other people about who's going to help out with building CRC or Okay, they, I, here's the question. So where do we go from here, right? Do we assume that it's going to be OKD local, or do we come up with another name? Because we will be building this ourselves. Charles says Charles says he'll have some time, maybe in the next couple of weeks, to do another build. I'm going to try to make some time to maybe do it myself just to experiment. Do we want to keep this viable, and what would we name it? What would we call it? Or do we keep it code ready containers? What do, what do we do from here? So th this is the question. I think the last we've we've been going around a little bit in circles around code ready containers, regardless about whether there is a demand for it. And I think there were three people who came on a call at, or on the mailing list at some point a, a month or so back. Um, are any of those three people on this call who actually use code ready containers? Bruce, is that you? Were you one of them? Uh, yeah. No, I don't uh, use it. Um, I have built it once, and I have downloaded the uh, uh, Charles version once and the uh, Red Hat version a couple of times. But uh, yeah, we we get discussion items and uh, questions from people. There's a couple of uh, discussion items that have been uh, created, and a couple of people asking in the channels. But when it's posed to them that they help build it, they are are not. Um, yeah. Not offering time. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I, I did actually volunteer at one point to be on a working group looking at that, but that was mainly with the interest of slimming it down to where yeah. it was sort of reasonable that somebody might actually be able to use it. Yeah, um, so, I am. I concur. So, like, also for us, no one is actually using it just because the resource requirements are are a bit too insane. So at that point, you might just as well run a proper cluster anyway, and then you can also, you know, you can actually test the actual thing instead of testing something that kind of looks like it. So the reason I, I'm pushing this envelope is because we have a few things coming up on our radar around the CICD community build process for OKD itself. And um, I think Initially, I was the one that pushed for getting a community build process for CRC on the Operate First cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and at, after some conversations in at KubeCon last week in Spain, um, and as, as Mike says, um, MicroShift is the new hotness. It's new, new and small. It's not really OpenShift, but it does have some OKD in it. But they're just using OKD. They're not really, it's not the full thing. So it's not quite the same thing. But I don't don't feel like there's any real pent up demand for us to do that, um, and and you know maybe if we could, um, if if Charo can get one more build out that's there, um, and do a little publicity about it to see if anyone and some gate I don't know how to gatekeep an open source project well enough to see if anyone's downloading it or anything. Um, but I I don't see that that's honestly where we should be putting any energy into. We have a, a bunch of other stuff coming up. So, you know, and that's, so I, I would be okay with um, tabling it for now and focusing on other things. Um, but saying that, not saying we're sunsetting it or anything, but, you know, to host it and have nobody use it is a, is a lot of work. I think the one advantage that I saw to it is whether it was going to be the the place where you were suggesting or that, you know, I was going to use it myself even as a test for automation of building OKD yeah. stuff. Um, there is some advantage to that as it being like a test case for things like that. But are five users representative out of no. the OKD community of, of a need to keep it going? 
Yeah, and I think the reason I put the operate first thing as the next topic on the list is that after the conversations with them, I think um, we're um, poised to rather than try and do a, um, a proof of concept that operator first will work with the CRC is to actually do a proof of concept with OKD and Fedora CoreOS on the operate first cloud. And so I'd rather expend our energies and get the operate first engineering resources and Brian Cook's team who build this, who's building out this new Skookum BICD process to um, to work, see if we can get it to work on the um, what's called the mass open cloud, which is basically Boston University's cloud that we have we have shares in, I guess is the best way we can boot up clusters and create pipelines for multiple things. Um, I'd rather we, and I'm gonna invite them, that's why I put it on the agenda, to the next full OKD working group to talk about how that might look and what, what would need to happen. Um, and, I, and I'm really glad that Neil's here too, because we've had this conversation about having a community built, um, managed and hosted build process. Um, and I just think CRC is, is a red herring at the point, at this point, and that we should probably try and focus on um, doing something with Operate First Cloud, um, because I think I tried to coerce Neil into giving us some um, data resources and, and you know everybody else's cloud to build it. And that's why I'm really pleased that Jack's here too, because CERN has been building their own, rolling their own OKD deployment and has their own CI CD process for building OKD with it, for running on OpenStack CERN style. Um, so I think it's what we're coming to is a tipping point of where we have enough people who are interested in doing this community managed sort of not, it's probably a bad thing to say, but sort of mimicking the Fedora infrastructure, but doing, but just for OKD pipe, build pipelines on operate first and having it managed by the community. And I think that's a big project for us to take on. Um, and we will get a lot of help from, from Red Hat, but what I really want to do is have the Operate First people come in two weeks' time to this session, talk about what it might look like. And I was actually going to, uh, after I, I talked with L. Mike, and L, I keep saying L. Michael, but Mike, um, and a number of other folks at KubeCon last week, and then I talked to Brian Cook, um, who is the, actually the engineer at Red Hat managing the CICB um, revamp, if you can, uh, build build service so as a managed service, which we could host on um, this Operate First Cloud or maybe on Amazon, it depends where this. So to get Brian to come and talk about what it would take, um, there's a little bit of questions about whether external people would be willing to use the single sign-on to get access to Red Hat resources, if that's okay, um, with the community, which personally for a build, I would do anything at this point. Um, and so I, I'm, I wanted to see if we could use the next meeting to talk about um, this, because you know I wave my hands a lot and talk a lot, but I would rather get the engineers who are building the process um, out in the open and talking to us. And then there's another build process, which is the current one, that's we use for building OCP and everything else. And there's a group of those customer facing engineers um, who are doing a three, uh, a three or six week sprint to build, um, to take on what Vadim has been doing already. So not, but it's still behind the Red Hat firewall. But the, the issue, one of, one of the many issues is that right now Red Hat is entirely responsible for building OKD. I would really love to see it community managed and community hosted um, somewhere on an open cloud. So, um, and there is an initiative there. Um, so that's what I'm hoping next week we can bring to the fold. And then what I'm also hoping with Jack and CERN and all that is we can learn from what you guys did and maybe um, you can listen in on what Brian Cook and those guys are cooking up for the new um, revamped build processes which is different than the current ones. The current ones have a lot of baggage. Um, and maybe we can learn from how you've rolled your own over at CERN and use that to inform what Brian Cook's group is doing. Um, because they could then just spin you up another pipeline like 
Um, Mike has a project where he wants a forked version of OKD for a certain thing that he's doing. So we, we could just build up, spin up more pipelines depending on what people wanted to build in this open cloud um, and learn from each other and then help Brian Cook improve what he's doing. So there's a lot of synergies here. And I'm gonna shut up now and let you ask me questions and then make Jack talk about what they're doing at CERN. Any questions about all that gobbledygook? So the wonderful thing about Commons last week was that CERN showed up and got some one-on-one -on -one time with, I think, with Christian and Vadim and other people, and um, we got a good earful about what you've been doing there. Um, we would really love to have you talk to the working group um, in two weeks' time, if you're willing to, to talk about what you're doing at CERN and how it is, and maybe give us a little hint about, about it right now. And then we yeah, have sure. another gig coming up on the 23rd of June in Dublin that Christian wanted me to invite you to come to to give a, a talk about what CERN's doing with OKD publicly um, beyond the working group if you're available. That, sound, that sounds great. Yeah, actually, I think I won't be available on the 23rd of June, but we can we can just get started for now. And I think I will also join in, in two weeks' time <clears throat> to, to maybe share a bit more about the details. But I think you already gave a, gave a pretty good hint. So, so basically, we are also just taking OKD as it is on, on the GitHub and then replacing a few of the operator images, mainly the ones that are handling the integration with OpenStack. Um, uh, so we're not doing a full custom build, but actually just replacing a few of the key components. And the reason for that is that uh, the OpenStack cloud that CERN has is, well, rather old, uh, because CERN was one of the main also contributors to OpenStack and, and developed it over time. Um, but that also leads to the fact that our API that we have is not fully like a regular OpenStack API, especially in the networking area. There are some special things in there. Some, In the end, it comes down to some API calls not being fully supported or slightly different. Um, so and for, for that reason, we, we started out with having to, to fork two of the images. So that's the cluster API provider for OpenStack and the machine config operator um, so that we can just basically adjust for those for those differences and in the end it's just commenting out a few lines of go code in there uh, maybe making some some different calls and that's it so really nothing fancy but we're also really trying to keep it at a minimum so that we don't introduce huge deltas to upstream that then we need to port to each OKD version and from my point of view, that has been working fairly well, uh, much better than I would have expected. And in fact, we became pretty comfortable with this approach. So now we've actually extended it also to the cluster ingress operator because that one is, at least in my opinion, fairly limited if you're deploying on OpenStack. Like for example, it does not have a proper integration with, with load balancers. It doesn't really know what to do with them. Uh, or that it should configure the external load balancer to speak uh, the proxy protocol, which is important if you want to preserve the client IP address. So some some kind of, well, in the end, again, minor changes like this, but that are just really huge because, uh, well, we want to know uh, from where clients are connecting and we want to have that in our access logs. So that's just an absolute must have. Um, and, and so, so we are just basically replacing. I think it's in total at the moment like four images that that we are we are building ourselves. Uh, where we are also coming back to the issue that was discussed before that some of the uh, from images in the Docker files are not publicly available, but instead we just uh, swapped out the ones that are publicly available, and we never had an issue due to that uh, because in the end. It, most of the time you just need a working go compiler and and that's it and uh, yeah then we are and basically nowadays we we're just doing exactly what is described on this new okd development page and uh, <clears throat> if we had that 2 years ago that would have been a massive help because uh, well be, be, i have to say before i saw this page now it was always a bit nebulous how you are actually supposed to mm, customize okd and uh, 
it's not, never really clear where, where these images are coming from and, and how they are built. But, but already this page, even though it's not fully finished yet, uh, is, a, is a massive help and basically also describes exactly what we are doing. So go to your operator that you want to replace, make some changes to it, build a custom image, push it somewhere, and then uh, do, uh, do a, create a custom release with the OC new release command. Uh, again, push it somewhere. And uh, that's it. And then uh, I guess the only part that's still missing actually is, is overriding the, the version in the cluster version operator. And um, that that's pretty much it, what we're doing. And of course, ag across several repos and then doing some, some integration there. But uh, yeah, now that I'm seeing this page, it looks so obvious, but it was not so obvious when we first had to figure it out for sure. Cool. Well, Jack, we want to have you come back to the next meeting so you can talk in more detail about this because this Sounds pretty fascinating, actually. So, if you're available to come on the what that would be, what date is the next meeting? Seventh. Uh, so, if you could come back on the seventh. Uh, yeah, I think I think that should be possible. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Can I right, ask folks, quickly? Uh, Jack, can I yes, ask please, Jack please. What, what version of OKD are you? What release are you on? We are currently on four point nine. And uh, we have uh, 4.10 uh, in, in the pipeline. Awesome. Okay, good. Cool. Excellent. I want to be mindful of folks' time because uh, we are at time now. So um, any last thoughts uh, before we end the meeting? Awesome. This was a great meeting and appreciate everyone's uh, participation and support. And we'll get these videos and meeting note notes up as soon as possible. Thanks, guys. Thanks, all.